Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can get three different looks using acrylic paint pens. This video is sponsored by Ahuhu, and I'll be using their brand new dual-tipped acrylic paint markers. And you're gonna learn how to get three different looks, decorate the inside of a card, and also how to make some envelopes without a template. Lots of good stuff in this video. We're gonna start off with some watercolor paper, and I'm using this affordable bee-inspired watercolor paper I picked up at Walmart. And I'm gonna cut this into four portions. You can get four card fronts from this, although I'll we'll only be using three. You can use Bristol, mixed media paper, thick cardstock, or hot press watercolor paper. Any smooth, thick paper is going to work good for this technique. You want to make sure it's kind of smooth because we will be doing some rubber stamping. Now I looked through my stash and I found some cool kind of uh, picture-y, landscape-y type of stamps that I thought would go good for this technique. And I also grabbed some waterproof black ink. I'm using this big stamp mount. It's called a stamp press and it's by Fiskars. And I really like it because I can hover my stamp over my paper and make sure I stamp it in just the right position. But if you don't have one of these, you can ink up your stamp rubber side up, kind of like we're going to ink it up here, and just press your paper to it. So you don't have to have this big stamp mount. I know stamps can get expensive. It all adds up. So definitely use what you have. The other bonus to this project is that I've never used these stamps before. So I'm finally getting a chance to put them into use. I'm inking up my stamp with my archival ink. Again, that's a waterproof ink, but don't worry if you don't have a stamp. If you want to sketch something out, this is going to work just fine. What you want to do is just give it a good inking. Try to make sure you have good coverage. And then with this stamp press, I can actually put my paper down. I can kind of hover the stamp over it. And once I feel like I've got it centered pretty well, then I can give it a good press. Now, my ink pad was a little bit dry here. I actually was due to re-ink it. So I don't get a perfect impression but it's going to be totally fine because the technique that we're going to do is going to be completely covered with paint when we're done. So you just want to stamp out all of the images you plan on using. The only image you need to be really picky about is the one we'll do a watercolor technique on. You want to make sure you have a really crisp image for that, but you'll see that when we get to the coloring portion of that stamped image. This first technique was the one I was the most excited to try out. I thought, boy, these pens have a really nice bullet tip and also a really nice fine tip. And I thought, I bet the bullet tip would be really good for a pointillism effect. Now, if you've ever looked at impressionist paintings, especially paintings done by George Seurat, you'll notice that sometimes they're done in a technique called pointillism, and that's done with a bunch of little dots of color. So I'm starting off with this dark blue, and I am concentrating dark blue dots of color towards the top of my sky here in this cover bridge type of um, uh, stamped image here. And then I'm bringing in a lighter blue and creating dots underneath and actually kind of tamping down onto some of the higher dots and letting the colors blend, blend together, both optically and also when the colors just kind of smush together. And I think it's really soft and such a pretty effect. And um, I don't know, I, I was just very inspired to do something like that with this image. This old bridge I thought was just kind of very stark on its own. And I thought if I could bring in some color, maybe some trees and blossom, it would just be really pretty and a wonderful all occasion card. These cards are definitely going to be mini works of art and they will look like they're hanging on a gallery wall after we're all done putting the cards together. Now with this technique I'm not filling in the entire sky area. If I know there's going to be trees behind there I'm going to just fill that in with the green because the pointillism technique is, I've sped this up, it's going to take you longer than any of the other techniques I'm going to share with you today. I also think it's kind of unique and um, and kind of fun. So I wanted to start off with this. While you, you know, you got all kinds of energy and you're, uh, you're fresh in the video. And even if you only stick around for one technique, I want this one to be it because I think this is just a really fun to do project. You want to try to do all your application with this tapping motion because that's going to give you that pointillistic effect, that impressionistic effect, and you want to use a variety of colors. So when you're doing your green trees, you're not just doing one shade of green. You want to get in a couple of those shades of green, maybe even the metallic green. This set of 30 acrylic paint pens from Uhuhu have some metallics, some neons, and some standard colors. And I think really to get the best out of this set, you want to use all the different varieties. I've got some metallic pink, I've got some neon pink, I've got some pastel pink. I'm using it all because when you have a limited range of colors, you want to, uh, you, you gotta make sure they can all, you know, lift some weight and they all can bring something to the table. And 
it's it's also nice when you capture a little bit of that metallic sparkle, I think, especially on a greeting card, because a greeting card is going to be picked up, it's going to be moved, it might be hung on the fridge or set on the mantle, light's going to catch the surface of the paper, there's nothing that's going to be between the surface of that painting and the viewer's eye, so that's a perfect opportunity to use a metallic product like the metallic paint pens in this kit. You can get a variety of sizes of dots from this bullet tip pen just by turning it at different angles and how hard you press. You obviously don't want to slam it down firmly and you know flatten or damage a tip, but you can give it a really light touch for a smaller dot or a more um, firm press for a larger dot. And you can use the fine tip on the opposite end for teeny tiny little dots, which we'll do for detail at the end, but we're doing most of this technique with the bullet tips because we need to get that you know bigger, rounder dot of color. Now you could do this technique on many different surfaces. If you like to paint rocks, this would be great for rock painting. Uh, you could use this for really anything, canvas painting, whatever you like. Of course, the tips are small, so it's gonna be lend itself better to smaller artworks. And that's why I thought doing this on a greeting card size panel would just be ideal. And then getting a chance to use some stamps that you might have in your stash and you may have neglected over the years is all the better. Now you're gonna see this bridge has some tiny details in the back. I wanted to stick to the the pointillism technique as much as possible with this, so I really got that impressionistic look. But if you want to go in and you want to draw a line or you want to use the finer point tip, please feel free. This is your card. You should make it look however you want it to look. I also wanted to note in the road area, I did use some of the metallic silver as well as the gray and the black because I didn't have like a medium gray and that metallic silver added kind of a nice mid-tone. And also often like asphalt will have a little bit of that glimmer to it. Even gravel will have a little bit of that sparkle sometimes. So I thought it, I thought it worked out pretty well. And I'm going in and filling in with some of the sky color where I felt like it needed a little bit more blue in between the bars of the bridge and yeah that's pretty much how we're going to color this you can add some shading with some darker greens um i'm thinking of kind of like an old copper bridge you know go ahead and use all those colors that you think will look good with your project this next technique has more of a sketchy look to it and it really kind of has that um and then, again i think it has an impressionistic vibe to it but it's definitely more loose and sketchy and fun and i'm starting off with this bright yellow i'm bringing in kind of like a, a sun setting scheme here and then I'm going in with some orange and I'm overlapping the yellow and I'm really keeping those lines. I think the lines are really energetic and really fun and it just kind of reminds me of like maybe a street artist in Europe doing a pastel sketch on the um, on a pier or something like that. So that's kind of the impression I'm going for here. I love the lines you get with the markers if you're just kind of sketching and doodling and I think it just gives it a really fun and artsy and funky look. So I'm blending the colors together a little bit just by overlapping my lines. So I would overlap orange between the red and yellow, I would overlap pink between the red and the purple, and so on and so forth until I was pretty happy with the amount of colors that I had down on the paper. You can leave as much white showing as you want. It's completely up to you. But I felt like I wanted to fill it in a little bit more. So what I ended up doing was um, adding some water with my markers. And you're going to see that in just a second after I get the majority of my paint down with the um, with the marker. Now you can, if you work really fast, you might just be able to use a wet brush and spread the colors. But if not, if your marker's already dry, because these Uhuhu markers do dry very quickly, what you can do is just scribble them out onto a plastic palette or a glass palette, whatever you have, and then you can use a wet brush to pick up the color and apply it to your card. Like I said before, this is completely up to your desires, how much you want to see that white paper shining through, how much blending you want. It really just needs to look good to your eye, and that's all. Don't worry that your stamping is a little sketchy. We are gonna fix that after this paper dries when we proceed to our next step, but you'll wanna finish this up and then just set it aside to dry. For this third card, we're going to use the acrylic markers to get a watercolor look. So start by scribbling the colors you want onto your palette, and then you're going to use a large brush to wet your card front. Now here's where I would really recommend you use watercolor paper, because sometimes when you use cardstock or other papers and you put a lot of water down, it wants to kind of pill the paper. So if you have a hot press watercolor paper or the back side of a watercolor paper that's a little bit smoother, it's going to give you a better result. Then all you need to do is 
is pick up the color with your brush and apply it to the paper. Starting with a stamped image like this that is so structurally strong, you don't have to really be too particular about where you put your colors. You just want to, you know, you can let it blur around. Just get some, maybe some gray in the ground, get some blue and purple in the sky, get some different sunsetty colors in the uh, in the buildings. Have fun with it. You've got the line work from the stamp. You don't need to reinvent the wheel or be too worried about it. This is a great technique anytime you have a really illustrative, sketchy stamp. I think it has such a fun vibe to it, and this is going to make such a pretty card. And honestly, this is the quickest card that we're going to make in the bunch, and it just looks great. And you can go in with the marker and add yellow to the windows and make it pop that way too. It's just kind of fun. Fun two ways to use that. You can use those fine tip markers and get that really fun uh, little detail effect. Now let's go back to the sunset background and put some details into the silhouette areas. I'm using the black acrylic paint pen from Uhuhu and I'm using the bullet tip to start off with. I'm gonna try to do as much as I can with the bullet tip because it's gonna cover more area. It's kind of like putting rocks in a bucket. You put the biggest rocks in first. So I'm gonna use the larger tip first and then go in with details if I need to with the finer one. Now this was the image that didn't stamp very well, remember that, but it doesn't matter because we can fill in anything we need to with the black pen. And because the acrylic paint markers are a little bit on the opaque side, we would have had to go in anyway and touch up some edges. So um, it really wasn't a problem that our stamping wasn't perfect. I wanted to keep this really sketchy looking, so um, I just kept with uh, kind of rough lines here and there. I'm using the fine tip now to put in those details of the lamp posts far away. And I really love how this looks. It kind of gives me Exorcist movie vibes. Speaking of details, I thought that this bridge really needed a little definition, so I'm using the fine tip end of the black marker to add a little crispness here and there. Just having the dots was a little too muddled after I looked at it a while later, so I decided to go back in and just add a little detail here and there. And while that does make it not strictly um, a 100% pointillism piece, I think it helps it. And honestly, that's the, uh, that's the main goal is to have a card front that I'm happy with. So go ahead and add any details that you need to any of the card fronts that you have remaining. I forgot to mention, you can do the dotting with the fine tip end of the marker like I'm doing here on the road to give it a little bit more detail in that kind of gravelly asphalt area. So uh, add those details too. Be sure to let your backgrounds completely dry and then you just want to trim them so they're nice and tidy. I'm removing the rough edges. Of course, if you like the way those rough edges look, maybe they're really artsy and beautiful, you can leave them. But I wasn't really happy with how sloppy mine looks, so I'm trimming them so I have a really nice fresh edge on each of my card fronts. These card fronts were really reminding me of little miniature works of art, so I thought I would give them kind of a classy, minimalist frame. And to do that, I'm gonna use black cardstock. So I just put some adhesive on the back of these panels, and what I like to do is use the corner of my cardstock as like to get two of my matting edges, and then I'll just trim the other sides. And I'm generous with the adhesive when I've painted on paper, because I find that painted paper will tend to warp a little bit, so I really put quite a few strips of adhesive, especially concentrating it on the edges. And I'm just using my ATG gun there. I find that that's the most economical adhesive for me. And I buy my tape refills, uh, the generic ones. I've gotten them from Tape Depot in the past and they work really well. I think you can even find them on Amazon too. And then I just use my paper trimmer to trim them apart. I try to trim them evenly. Sometimes I make a mistake and have to pull it up and readjust, but in an ideal world, you just trim them all perfectly with about an eighth of an inch border on each side. Keeping with the simple gallery style aesthetic, I'm simply taking a piece of cardstock that I've trimmed to 10 inches by seven inches and folding it in half and making a five by seven card. I'll make three of these for my cards here today. I thought about doing some stenciling or ink blending on the background of the card, but once I saw the artwork just on the white card front, I really liked it. Now you could use the fine tip end of your Ohuhu marker to write thank you, thinking of you, happy birthday, or whatever you want in that space at the bottom, or leave it as is because having a thicker mat at the bottom looks very artistic and is very flattering. And then you have the options left open for the future. Now again, don't be stingy with your adhesive. You wanna make sure these cards are not gonna fall apart when you 
email them to somebody. You don't want to be mailing somebody an activity, do you? And uh, just center it right up, leaving a little bit thicker of an edge on the bottom. Like I said, it's a little bit more um, aesthetically pleasing that way. And I just absolutely love the way these turned out. I think they're so chic and they would just be beautiful for any person, any occasion. They're completely versatile. Now pay attention because I'm going to share one of my favorite card making tips with you right now. And this is how to make an envelope for any size card without a template. So all you need is a ruler and you're going to measure your card from corner to corner. So I go corner to corner on this five by seven card and that measurement is eight and a half inches. Then you need to add one inch. So that would be nine and a half inches. So all you have to do now is cut a square of scrap of paper, nine and a half by nine and a half. And that is going to make your envelope. I'm using double-sided paper that has a solid color on one side and a pattern color on the other, but you can use regular scrap of paper that's just white on one side. You want to place your paper so the pattern side is up, and that's going to be the inside of your envelope, and you want it kind of arranged like a diamond, okay? And then you're going to put your card on top like so and center it up. And then all you need to do is simply fold the edges around it, and you can shift it out a little bit before you fold it to give a little bit extra space on the inside, but I find that this works pretty well for getting a really nice envelope that's just big enough. Of course, there's not a lot of embellishment. There's no embellishment on this card, so if you did have thick embellishments, you'd want a little extra room in there. So after you open it up, I recommend you take some scissors and you trim away the little uh, corners and that's just going to give you a much tidier envelope when you fold it. I also like to trim the point on one of the long sides because that's going to make it look a lot more like a commercial envelope and a lot more tidy when you fold it up. And then I just kind of finger crease everything to make sure it's nice and neat and apply my adhesive. I pull in the two short flaps and I put my adhesive on those sides and then I fold it up over. I hope that makes sense. Now we've got the solid side on the outside so it will be really easy to write an address on it. And as you can see, the cards fit just perfectly. So just do that for every envelope and save your scraps because you're gonna see why in a second. I love making coordinating envelopes for my cards because then I have the scraps left over that I can use to decorate the insides of the cards. I think it really adds a nice touch and it gives you a little bit of embellishment without having to disturb the really chic modern look of the outside of the card. I decorated these cards pretty much all the same. I trimmed down a strip of the coordinating envelope paper to fit on the inside of the card. I tore it and overlapped those pieces and adhered them down. That just gives us a nice sort of, um, I don't know, it just kind of repeats the motif and I think it looks good. I found that grungy swirl that I thought would look really nice along one of the edges. I also found this fun sundial clock motif, which I thought would just be fun stamped over the different layers. And I have a text stamp too, which I think adds a little texture and a nice fun flare. And I also like it because it, it kind of reduces the area where you need to write if you don't have a lot to say in a card, which I always struggle trying to figure out what to say, what I want to write in a card. So it does kind of take up some of the space and also look really, um, you know, bespoke and, you know, customized. And there you have it. You've got three brand new cards using three different techniques with your acrylic paint pens from Ohuhu. I will have links to ohuhu.com and a coupon code. So if you want to shop there, you can save a little money. You can also find these on Amazon. So wherever you prefer to shop, you can find these high quality markers. Remember, they have a bullet tip on one end, a fine tip on the other. So you just have a lot of versatility with these pens. I hope you found this video useful today. Please let me know if you have any comments in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed enjoyed it and let me know what your favorite tip or technique from this video was. I would love to hear it. Thanks to Ohuhu for sponsoring this video today and thank you for watching. Till next time, happy crafting!